In this video, we're going to be going through how to set up a virtual machine in Azure and then how to remote into that machine. We'll be using a Windows 10 machine and then uh, we'll be logging in um, through our computer onto it remotely. Uh, so here we go. Now, the first thing we need to do in making a virtual machine is we need to create a resource group for that machine to be located within. So a resource group basically is um, where you put all of the resources that you want together uh, within your infrastructure to be. Uh, and so say you want to create um, several you know, forms of infrastructure for an organization, you'd put them in several buckets of, of resource groups and they just containerize what you're doing there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, type in our search bar, it's right here, but I just wanna show you, we'll go resource groups. Then we'll hit resource groups. Then we'll go over to here, create, we'll create a resource group then as you can see I've made several but we'll go first resource and you can put it in East US you can put it wherever you want we'll go to review and create and we'll create it you have now created your first resource group. Next, we'll go into search bar, we'll search up virtual machines, because this is why you came, virtual machines. <coughs> and we'll click create, Azure virtual machines. And we'll go through these things. So the first thing is we need to go through is we need to select the resource group we want it to be a part of. It can make a new one or we go click the drop down menu and hit first resource. And then we want to give the virtual machine a name. So I'm just going to call it VM01. Uh, we want it to be located in East US because it has to be in the same uh, region as your resource group. Uh, and we can just ignore the availability options and the security type. We'll just look at the image. So the image is the, the operating system that's going to be underlying our machine. Uh, and so this will be assigned, assigned to us. So we get to choose out of a list of operating systems uh, what we want. So I'm going to use a Windows 10 Pro. And then we'll leave that at x64. Uh, and then here where it says size, we want to check to, to make sure it has enough size so when we actually remote into it that it's, it's not going to be a slow machine, that it's actually going to be worthwhile. And because we're only spinning it up for a moment, it's not going to cost us much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for standard D4s, uh, V3, so that's four virtual CPUs and 16 gigs of memory, that's RAM. So I'll select that one. We'll give ourselves a, uh, a username and then a password. And then this little tick tells us that um, they both match. We also want to allow for RDP, so remote desktop protocol, which just uh, allows us to be able to then connect, connect remotely uh, through the internet to this machine. Now we'll have to select I confirm uh, the licensing and then we'll go up to the top, back up to the top. Starting not to go, go to networking. Now we'll create a new virtual network, uh, assign us a subnet and then it will create us a public IP address. So that means that we can actually connect to this computer. Then we'll ignore management, monitoring advanced tags for now and click on review and create. 
and now we'll just go through a validation process to make sure that everything that we've chosen is within our plan, um, within our free plan and able to actually be put together. So we see here that it's only costing us 19 cents, uh, US cents per hour. And if you want to, you can go and validate this, but uh, it's always exactly what we did because we haven't done something like super complicated. So we'll just click create. And now it's just gonna take a little bit of time to create that. So as you can see, it's initializing deployment. And now we'll take us to this page where it's creating our virtual machine. Now while that's running, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back to virtual machines. We're gonna go create Azure Virtual Machine and we're gonna create a, a Linux machine that we can then SSH into from our Windows machine. It's gonna be a bit of an inception thing. So we go first resource, VM02. We need to make sure that the region is the same because we're gonna assign the same virtual uh, network to, um, to our Linux machine as our Windows machine. So it doesn't really matter, we just use Windows, uh, Ubuntu server, x64, and then down here we'll assign the same, um, actually we'll assign a little bit less memory because it doesn't really need that much. Uh, we'll authentication type, instead of being SSH public key, we'll use a password. So I usually just set the same credentials just because we're gonna um, split it up and then delete it as soon as we're done. So make sure that SSH is enabled. We go back up to the top, go to networking, make sure we're on first resource VNet, that it's the same subnet as our last machine and that it is assigned an IP, a public IP address so that we can SSH into that machine. All right, so then we go review and create. So we can see this one's gonna be $12, 12 cents an hour. Uh, for some reason this failed. Okay. It said that it, um, had failed the validation because I've exceeded the amount of cores. So I probably used way too many cores on my last machine. And so now it's unhappy. What I'm gonna to have to do is go back, delete that other machine, which will help us to know how to delete the machine, and then remake both of them to have two virtual cores, uh, and then make sure that they can like run that way. So, what I'll do is, I will go up to here, go back to virtual, yep, we'll discard that, virtual machines, select this, and then we'll hit delete. Apply force delete on everything. Yep, confirm details, delete. Take a drink of tea.
All right, so that's been deleted. Virtual machines. Let's refresh this. Let's make sure. Why is this? Ah, okay. So it's done. It's still showing up, but it's not. It's not actually there. All right. We'll create Azure Virtual Machine. Onto first resource, VM01, Windows 10. We'll do the 2 and 16, lab user. is set view create validation has passed which is great we'll create that Wait until this loads the next screen. Great. So now we'll make the next one. <laughs> Select the resource group, first resource, VM02, one to server. Alright, virtual CPUs, yep, great. Lab user. Sure, it's SSH networking. Yep, that's the right net VNet. That's the right subnet. Allow it to assign a IP. And it's pass of ventilation. Yes. All right. Let's create. So just so you know, I'm using a Mac, uh, a MacBook Pro to actually do all of this. Uh, and so now I'll be able to use a Windows machine within my Mac without using any of my resources. Wait until that loads. And we have success. Woo. All right, so now, how do we remote into it? If you're using a Windows machine, then the easiest way is go to your start menu and type in remote desktop, and then it will, you'll be able to click on remote desktop connection and log in through that way. Because I'm a Mac user, I will be using the Microsoft remote desktop application that you can find in the App Store. Um, and so what I'm going to do 
is you need to know the public IP address of your machine. So we'll go to virtual machines, then we'll go to our VM, and if you go all the way across, it has the public IP uh, stated right there. So copy that, fire up your remote desktop application, we'll add a PC, and we'll put our IP address in there, make sure there's no space at the end because sometimes this stuff reads it weird. And here we've added our PC. So now log in, lab user. And then it will ask you this, you just click continue. And here we are. It's a Windows machine. We don't need any of these things. And it's a Windows machine. So as you can see, my Mac, Windows. All right, so what we're gonna do now is, firstly, I wanna see our IP address and where we're located in the world. So right now, I'm in Australia, physically. I am in Australia. We're going to go to what is my IP address com. and this is the address for my machine and apparently I am in Washington, Virginia, in the US. That's where this machine is uh, and so yeah that's really cool. I find that really cool. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to ping our um, our Ubuntu machine. So I'm going to type in power so I can use PowerShell. Click on PowerShell. So firstly we want to do uh, dash A. And this will then bring up all the, the machines. Uh, that are within our network. So we've got our, our gateway and our broadcast address there. Uh, our Ubuntu machine hasn't actually appeared here, which is weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go have a look from here what the address is. So VM2. Let it load. As you can see, under networking, it says private, private IP address 10.0.0.6. So we're going to do is ping 10.0.0.6. That's five, that's me. So we're receiving a reply. That means there is a connection between us and the Ubuntu server. So what I'm going to do is SSH lab user at 10.0.0.6 tap enter it will ask us if we want to be fingerprinted because we don't have a public key and we'll say yes then we need to enter in the password so when you enter in a password through SSH it actually won't show up uh, in the, um, the prompt so you just got to trust that it's working. And as you can see here, it's loaded. So we're going to put who am I? Lab user. So 
then we can go pwd print the current directory we're in the home so we can let's create a test.txt so we've made this and it's there so as you can see we have successfully logged into a Windows machine, virtual machine and logged into our Ubuntu server here as a lab user in the next video I'm going to be doing a network analysis uh, using Wireshark. So I'll be downloading Wireshark and then running several uh, commands using um, in PowerShell uh, to be able to analyze the network traffic there. Thanks for watching.